Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing rational functions. A function is considered to be rational if it is the quotient of two polynomials. You have to be careful with these because if your denominator is equal to zero, it would cause an undefined value for your function. So we want to exclude any numbers that cause our denominator to equal zero. And you always want to decide on your domain before you simplify your rational function. Let's look at this example. We have the function of x equals 3 over x minus 4. If we put a 4 in our denominator, it would cause an undefined value. So that's where our d of x is equal to 0. So we're going to exclude 4 from our domain. We can do that by writing it in interval notation. So our domain goes from negative infinity to 4, and then again from 4 to infinity, excluding the 4 by using the soft brackets. Let's look at to see what happens to our graph as x approaches 4. We're going to start on the left side of 4. So we're going to plug in numbers very close to 4. At 3.9 we have negative 30. At 3.99 we have negative 300. At 3.999 we have negative 3000. And then we'll jump all the way to negative 30,000 as we close in on 4. So as you can see, these numbers are approaching negative infinity. So our graph should be pointing up to negative infinity on the left side, or sorry, pointing down to negative infinity on the left side as we head in toward 4. Let's look to see what happens on the other side of 4. We're going to see what happens as the graph approaches 4 from the right side. So starting at 4.1, we have 30. 4.01, we're going up to 300. 4.001, we're up to 3,000. And then we jump all the way to 30,000. So we're heading in toward positive infinity as x approaches 4 from the right side. When your graph is heading toward infinity or negative infinity, as x approaches a certain number, you're going to have a vertical asymptote at that number. So in this case, since we're going to infinity on one side, negative infinity on the other side, our graph is heading toward um, infinity, so that means that we have vertical asymptote at x equals 4. If you have a vertical asymptote on your graph, it will break it up into branches. In this case, we have one vertical asymptote, so we will have two branches of our graph. Your graph will never cross a vertical asymptote. This graph also has a horizontal asymptote. In order to find a point at which your graph has a horizontal asymptote, you want to look to see what happens to the function as your x values go to either infinity or to negative infinity. In this case, we're going to look to see what happens to our graph as x approaches positive infinity. So we're going to plug in increasingly larger numbers. So plugging in 10 into 3 over x minus 4, our output is 1 half. Plugging in 100, we get out 1 over 32. At 1,000, we have 1 over 332. And at 10,000, we have an even smaller number at 1 over 3,332. So as x goes to infinity, our graph heads towards 0. So the line at y equals 0, or the x-axis, is an asymptote for this graph as well. This, is, this will be our horizontal asymptote. You can also try on your own to do some negative values. So put in negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, and negative 10,000. And what you should find is those numbers approach 0 as well but they will all be on the negative side of the x-axis. Um, so to draw a graph, what we're going to do is draw the asymptotes first using dotted lines. These lines will act as boundaries for the branches of our graph. To complete the graph, we will need to plot at least three points to the left and three points to the right of the vertical asymptote. In this case, that means numbers three numbers below 4 and three numbers above 4. So we're going to start with numbers below 4. At 1, we get out negative 1. At 2, negative 1 and a half, and 3, negative 3. Then I chose uh, three numbers above 4 at 5, 6, and 7. Now we're going to plot those points onto the graph that we drew our asymptotes on, and then connect the points with smooth curves. So we get this graph. Notice that as the graph is heading into 4 from the um, 
right side, the graph is heading up to positive infinity. As it's heading into 4 from the left side, it's heading down to negative infinity. As the graph approaches infinity for x, the output values are heading towards 0, toward the x-axis or to the line y equals 0. As we head into a negative infinity for x, the y values are heading up to 0, coming in from the negative side. So we have the horizontal asymptote at 0 and the vertical asymptote at 4. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.